All right. Welcome to issue 115, Nerflow Podcast. We back again for another week of all the greatest things in nerd culture, anime, video games, comic books, you name it on this show, we talk about it. Uh, this week on Nerdflow Podcast, man, we got a lot of rumors, man. A lot of rumor meals, a lot of stuff uh, that's being speculated as far as for this next phase and what's in development for the MCU and DC. It's it's, it's going to be a very comic book heavy. So if you're into that type of thing, then this is going to be your show today. Um, but before we get into all of that, first, I um, want to make sure you guys please subscribe, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Sus- all that good stuff. Follow, like, subscribe. However, it is that they you do what you do, whatever social media platform that you uh, like to be on. Um, you can search for Nerd Flow Podcast or Nerd Flow, uh, and it'll pull that up, and you'll be able to uh, be part of the community and kind of see all the latest news and nerd uh, culture. In addition to that, man, we also got the Facebook group. Uh, you want to be around like minded nerd people, like this ragtag gang of six. Or five sometimes. Um, but yeah, man, you can go over to Facebook groups, search Nerdflow. We also got 50% off Nerdflow t shirts still running that thing. And then, in addition to that, we're on the road to try to get uh, 100 followers so we can get our official YouTube URL. So make sure you go to the YouTube page, search, search Nerdflow Podcast. Uh, we have uh, the weekly episodes, the audio version does upload to the YouTube channel. So if you you know, you got YouTube, uh, what is it called? YouTube Red or YouTube Premium, and you want to listen to the show through YouTube, you can do that through there as well. So, all right. Uh, before we get into all these freaking rumors, because there's going to be a lot of back and forth, um, this week, some announcements real quick. Uh, of course, Borderlands 3, Borderlands 3 came out Friday. Haven't picked it up yet, but a lot of people say it's very, very great. Uh, uh, good game. Gears 5 came out as well. I don't know. I even, even spoke about Gears 5 last episode, but uh, that came out as well. Xbox, if you got Xbox uh, Ultimate or uh, or Xbox Game Pass, you can get, you had a chance to play like four days early. All that good stuff. And then in addition to that, because today we're recording this on a Monday, we typically record on a Sunday. Um, as of tomorrow, uh, year two annual pass for Destiny 2 will be free. So if you have Forsaken, and you want to kind of play cut some of that content, probably may not make it through all of it by October 1st, but you can at least play it. It'll be free tomorrow, starting tomorrow. I also believe that New Light uh, Destiny 2 starts tomorrow, which means that Destiny will be free to play um, up to the first year expansion, first year annual pass, and like the core game, all that stuff will be free to play. So it's going to be a lot of people on probably for the first time uh, playing Destiny that was probably curious about, but didn't want to, you know, put the money out, but That'll be a thing tomorrow as well. So expect to see a lot of new new people, new guardians, all that good stuff in the game. So, um, yeah. So let's get into these rumors, man, because it's a lot. It's a lot. <clears throat> um, let's see. Where should we start? Galactus. There is a rumor casting for Galactus uh, for the MCU. Um, so it kind of like, I mean, everybody's been speculating on you know who's going to be the next big who's going to be the next big bag following um i forgot the boy name already thanos uh so everybody's wondering who would be the next big bag a lot of people have been speculating that it could only be you know the mad titan himself is he is he really is he a titan galactus galactus yeah he's a titan okay i was gonna say the mad titan i'm like yeah yeah so uh, but Galactic, Galactus casting is rumored to be Liam Neeson, Mister Taken himself. He got the voice. Yes, he does. He got the voice. Just think about all the times you can hear Galactus in Fantastic Four cartoons. Or just imagine all the many times Liam Neeson has threatened some strange man to kidnap a member of his family. True. <laughs> I will find you, and I will kill you. Oh, we know you will. I will eat your planet. <laughs> Oh, that's true. He was Zeus. Yeah, he was Zeus. Yep. Release the Kraken. So I guess we're all in agreement. That's a good. That's that. If that if that rumor comes to be true, that's a good casting, huh? Yeah. yeah I just thought. 
I I almost felt betrayed by uh Il- Ildris Elba. The, I mean, yeah, how do you say his name? I almost felt betrayed betrayed by him. Why? You know, I know he died in Marvel. Uh huh. But you know, you you just hopped on the first bus DC gave to you. Well, I mean, yeah, because I mean, the only people that are not the only people that are not safe from kind of like it's MCU but it's not MCU are the people from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and all the Netflix shows because they're not they weren't produced on Marvel Studios so they can be recast to be somebody else if they really really want them or really like them and speaking of the Marvel shows just to skip over one to go to another uh, David Tennant uh, possibly may be casted as the Doctor Strange sequel uh, villain nightmare um we don't know who David Tennant is. David Tennant played the Purple Man from Jessica Jones, which is her uh, pretty much main antagonist uh, throughout the Jessica Jones comics and the first season of Jessica Jones. Uh, so he may be getting recasted since those shows are, you know, done with. Uh, he'll be casted as, could possibly be casted as Nightmare for Doctor Strange and uh, what is it called? Into the Multiverse or whatever it's called? Multiverse of Madness? Yeah. So, what y'all think about that one? Hello. It's... Sorry. I'm like, I'm like sitting here like, what y'all think about that? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> I'm driving. Um, but he was a good bad guy in um. Yeah, the purple man. He was. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was definitely a creep. Cool. <laughs> yeah. He was crazy. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. 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 Uh, the reason why I was silent about it is because, like, I'm still not over the whole fact that you know the Netflix shows are not canon. And so it's gonna be weird to me if they if they do get him to uh, play him, and you know I know this uh, another role for the actor and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, they could keep some, <clears throat> even though for like, even though they say it's not canon. Who says that if they said, for example, this is just an example that probably we all would want. Hey, let's put Luke Cage in the MCU and they just recast what you call it, Mike, what you call it to play Luke Cage. We wouldn't be mad at that. Who? Michael, I'd be mad as hell. Who yeah, you talking Mike, about Michael J. White? Mike Coulter. No. Oh, Mike Coulter. Yeah, we wouldn't be mad if they recasted him as a, in an MCU show as Luke Cage again. And now he's canon. We wouldn't be mad at that. I wouldn't be mad at what you call it to be recasted as Jessica Jones. Because she was a good casting. Which kind of brings up the fact, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but you know how they want uh, Zara Dawson play She Hope? Yeah, yeah, she's rumored to be her, or the rumor is it's between her and Ronda Rousey. Another. Uh, Ronda well, Rousey has the build. Ronda Rousey yes, can't act. Ronda Rousey can't act. Yeah. But Ronda Rousey has the. She, I mean, she's a former UFC fighter, so, I mean. She has the build, but what you call it has the. If you can combine the two, then you'd be good. <laughs> be perfect. But yeah, so that's that's the rumor to be casting for that. Uh, seems like Boss Logic's uh, fake casting kind of worked in Rosario Dawson's favor. It's another person from another Netflix show because she played the night nurse in pretty much all the shows. Claire. Yeah. She played Claire. Yeah. <laughs> But they call it a, uh, in the comments. They call it a night nurse. Night nurse. All, yeah. all, all the superheroes, all the superheroes in uh, Hell's Kitchen go to her to get get fixed up that are not yeah, like yeah. human. Yeah, yeah. That's why <laughs> Daredevil started going to her first, and mm-hmm. then you know she showed up in what, what was it? Jessica Jones next. She showed up in, or was it? Uh, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, Jessica Jones came next, then Luke Cage. Then Luke Cage, and then she ended up being in Iron Fist. So you yeah. know she pretty much is. The doctor for the defenders. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So she was a night nurse. Um, branching off the Galactus casting, these are two rumored topics. Uh, Silver Surfer movie is in the works. Uh, he's getting his own movie. Um, in addition to that, the other rumor that's floating around is that the next phase of the MCU will have two big villains. And. Uh, rumored okay. to be Galactus and Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom okay. will be the villain on Earth, and Galactus will Galactus be the, the villain in space for, for yeah for the universe. Yeah. 
Okay, so my thing about the Silver Surfer, like the reason his cartoon didn't last no longer than one season, like Silver Surfer doesn't have a personality. He is very he's very mundane since you know because Galactus turned him into pretty much just a slave. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. Galactus's herald. So, like, he doesn't have a personality. We saw we saw that in the uh, like he's a cool looking character. Don't get me wrong, and he has cool powers. But as far as a personality, he doesn't have one. Like the like the only thing you could do in a Silver Surfer movie is show how Galactus turned him into the Silver Surfer. Show him going to different planets in the beginning and showing uh, how he lured Galactus to the planets and then showing him betraying Galactus and becoming a good guy. Other than, and, and, and that's it. It's like Silver Surfer has, like how all other Marvel characters have a personality, he's the one character that doesn't have a personality. He doesn't have an alter ego nothing like when he was turned into the silver surfer he was almost just turned into a mindless slave until he started dealing with the fantastic four and they turned him well maybe i mean we don't <clears throat> reservoir right now i mean it's just one it's just rumor but two it could possibly be like a prequel we could they could show you know what he was before he became it, it may be a thing where it shows him when he meets Galactus and becomes a civil servant, so we get kind of more of a background on him. Uh, I mean, what happened was, what happened was, it's like he didn't meet Galactus. Galactus came and destroyed, tried to, to come to destroy his planet, and he pleaded with Galactus to spare his family and his planet. And Galactus made a deal with him: become my herald, and I destroy. I mean, and I, uh, you know, spare your planet. But in reality, when he became the herald. Galactus still destroyed his fa- his um, planet and his family. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, it could be one of those where it could be like a little, probably a little 50 50. We get a little bit of his backstory from a good part of the movie. And then, you know, of course, we get we get that. The kind of, and we kind of get to get a little small taste of Galactus in the, um, in the Silver Surfer movie before we see him, you know, in a larger, from a, from a larger standpoint. Could be something like that. So. Um, let's see what else, man. I lost track of all these rumors we got on here. Um, oh yeah. Um, but again, but again, like we got two, we got two big bads that are gonna be into the MCU. I think that's probably gonna be probably a good way to go. Because typically, I mean, Doctor Doom typically is always working with somebody else in in, in tandem most of the dog on time. When I've always it was Doctor Doom and Mandarin. <laughs> they used to give Iron Man hell. Yeah, Doctor Doom. It was it was him. He was either Doctor Doom and Red Skull, or Doctor Doom and uh, like Modok, or like it's like always like somebody that he's always in tandem with. Well, Modok was one of the cronies of the Mandarin and a lot of the comics. Yeah, I would like to see Modok too. Honestly, uh, uh, for a whole second, the, the scientist from the first, I think, uh, Captain America: The Avengers. The, the first Avenger, the uh, first Captain America, the scientist that had that wore the glasses, I think he would be a good, like, you know, the voice of Modoc because he looking, fucking look like Modoc honestly. Um, but yeah, I think he would have been, uh, for a whole second, I kind of thought that we was going to kind of get that for a whole second because I know Modoc does, like, kick it with Red Skull and, the, and Hydra as well, too. So, <clears throat> um, let's see here. Um, then we also got. And so this caught me left field when I saw this, when I heard this rumor for this casting. So there is a rumor for Moon Knight casting. Um, we've all been saying that we feel like it's going to be Keanu. But these two people that have been named to be rumored to possibly be Moon Knight just kind of like just left field. So the two names are Andrew Garfield and Shia LaBeouf for Moon Knight. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Uh huh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they just don't sit right. <clears throat> I mean, because you're coming. I mean, if you look at, um, I mean, if you look at like Moon Knight himself, like 
I mean, could potentially because if you see him, if people look at like just kind of Google Moon Knight without the mask on, you look at him, he um, probably a uh, probably closer casting for me would probably be like uh, what's his name, Teron Egerton from um. Oh yeah, from uh, um, um, I'm, th- I'm saying Robbie. in my head, I'm saying in my head, Golden Circle, but I can't think of the name for the, the the main title of the movie. The uh, I I cause the freshest thing in my mind is Robin Hood. But, yeah, uh, he, yeah, he's in Robin Hood. Yeah, yeah, like see him if they wanted to go with somebody like a little bit younger, I could say he he would he would be a good casting as well. <clears throat> I just don't see. I haven't seen Andrew Garfield in that depth of like because again, let's be okay. Moon Knight is a schizo. That is like that's the main thing. You got to be like from an acting standpoint. Now, Shia LaBeouf could pull that off. That's but, what I was just about to say. <laughs> I mean, he got that part. <laughs> this is real life. <laughs> <laughs> you see these rumors surround me. <laughs> it's like so, so yeah, Shia. Here's what I want you to do: just. <laughs> We're gonna turn the camera on and you're just gonna act normal. Kingsman. Okay. That's what it's called. <laughs> Kingsman, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Charlotte, you just gonna we're just gonna record you, you just act normal. But you're gonna wear all white. And you know what? <laughs> if you say his name, I could just think of calling him Robin Locksley or Exy. That's yeah. I like I, I just don't really ever say his real name. To make people know who I'm talking about, I'll say Robin Hood or Exy. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Okay, we talked about the She-Hulk thing. Okay, uh, Haley Stafford is casted as... This is not a rumor. This is, like, legit. She's been casted as Hawkeye for the Disney Plus show. Um, I kind of saw some people kind of, um, like, kind of up in arms about her casting. I'm like, I really didn't... Honestly, really didn't care. Like, I really didn't. I don't, I don't understand. I didn't understand what was the, uh, the hoopla about casting her. I really did. Uh, you know how people are, man. The same they <laughs> they they people people online just want a reason to be mad about something. Just like they was mad about Ironheart, they'll get mad about all anything. Yep. Yeah, I'm like I, I'm like I like I really like I honestly I really didn't like I was even I'm like I like I don't get it. I don't understand why y'all mad about this. Like you like. She, it's like she's a white girl, and Hawkeye, the daughter, she's a white girl. We didn't, we didn't blur any lines. We didn't make her Asian. We didn't make her like she's white. That's it. Like you don't get trolls, regardless. If it's yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's well, you know, it's the internet, so yeah. And it's th- it's starting it's starting to make people sick too. But there's nothing you can do. Trolls. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't understand that one at all. Um, then we got a a large laundry list of people casted for the Suicide Squad, the James Gunn version. Um, and we don't really know who they're playing. We don't really know, know who they're playing. Just a lot of like key names and stuff like that. Um, some of these people I don't even know off the top of my head. I'm about reading their name. I may know them when I look at them in, like, in the face. Of course, we know Margot Robbie. Uh, Idris Elba is in there. We've heard that. John Cena's casted in the movie. I wonder who the heck he's playing. Um, Nathan Fillion is in there. I know he is. Uh, uh, Joe Keneman? I think I, I think I know who that is. Uh, Storm Reed. Pete Davidson. He's from Saturday Night Live. I wonder who the heck he's playing. Uh, Taki, <laughs> Taki Watiti, which is the director for Thor. freaking Thor Ragnarok is in <laughs> I'm like, and you're also going to be directing Thor: Love and Thunder as well. So you're going, to, but you're going to be acting in a movie too. I'm like, man. <clears throat> so I wonder what who the heck he's playing. Um, let's see. He got time. Every, right. Yeah, he definitely got. He definitely got time. <laughs> uh, Tanashi Kajis is that the R&B singer? That's the real last name. That's the only Tanashi I know of. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer Holland. I think I know who that is. But yeah, it's a lot of names. Like, I have to like I haven't really gone over like and kind of Google these people and looked them like looked at their faces to kind of see who they could, you know, possibly be playing and all that stuff. But uh it's a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, actors in this. Um hopefully the hopefully hey, it looks like it's too big of a cast for this movie. Uh 
I mean, they're not. They didn't. I mean, I would say that they didn't go the whole route because it's. I mean, it from uh, somebody else may think different. Like, oh, these are a bunch of big names, but no, nah, not really. I mean, it's probably no. Nah, it's not. But like, like one of the biggest name on that list is Ildris Elba. Yeah, but, Marvel, uh, Marvel uh, Avengers, yeah. You know, it's just like it just look like it's too big of a cast, man. You know, most movies that have a real large cast like that don't do too well because it's hard to divide the screen time. So, I don't know. I'll say this much. I mean, a lot of the... DC is doing very good. Well, we haven't... The movie's not out yet, but from what everybody says, like the, the Joker movie, of course. Like, they're doing very well with focusing on... Uh, the villains of DC, uh, which is a, which is a completely different route from what uh, Marvel's doing. So, I mean, maybe I mean James Gunn has done some good stuff. So, I mean, maybe we maybe we may have something with this uh the Suicide Squad movie. So we can't do nothing but wait and see till we see a trailer first, and we kind of kind of prejudge a little bit and then go from there. So, um, Tony Stark will be making a cameo in Black Widow. Which, not really surprising. It takes place in the nineties. Um, you know, also some people up in arms about him making a maybe reprising his role as Iron Man in an Iron Heart Disney Plus show as well. I don't know if it's live action or cartoon, but people are like kind of upset because he's. But you, but you, it's like whatever, man. <laughs> we we time traveled in Endgame. Okay, shut up. Exactly. <laughs> We, exactly. We, we time traveled. <laughs> okay, so leave it alone. Uh, let's see here, man. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Um, Disney Plus show announcements. This, oh, this like made my week last week to hear this. Uh, Disney Plus showing uh, Disney Plus shows that got announced. Um, so some throwback uh, Marvel shows, X Men the animated series, Spider Man. Fantastic Four, and there was a couple. That was a, like a slew of a couple other ones, but of course, to a lot of people, what matters the most is the Spider-Man from Fox and the X-Men show. Yes, <laughs> the like let's put it, let's just be honest. Fantastic Four cartoon. It came on at five o'clock in, the, in morning. the morning. Yep, <laughs> yep. Uh, Iron Man cartoon came on at five. And yes, I was up watching them. Because Dragon Ball Z came up at, came on at four thirty in the morning on Fox. And Bobby's so, World. And then, you know, <laughs> six o'clock roll around, Bobby's World kick off the Fox Box. Fox Kids. Yeah. First it was called Fox Box, then it became Fox Kids. Bobby's World, then you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um the tick came on, then yeah. I uh, as a kid, I never understood why I was up there that damn early, but I was, <laughs> yeah, it, it was only on Saturdays. It, it was just yeah. like it was just like, oh, I'm up. Okay, I guess I'll go watch TV now. Is it bad that I remember the lineup? <laughs> no, I remember the lineup vividly because I was cause, up at because you remember when we used to get out of school. Fox had uh, afternoon cartoons because Batman yep. came on. Yep, uh, Big yeah. Bad Beetleborgs and stuff like that. Because Power Rangers. Yeah, Animaniacs, because Power Rangers just was saved for the Power Rangers and VR Troopers was saved for the weekend. Because Power Rangers come on first, VR Troopers is, is what ended the Fox the uh, Fox box on Fox Kids had the morning cartoons. Yeah. So, you know, it was like, you know, they had, like, Fox had, like, I missed the time we grew up in in the 90s because you had Saturday morning cartoons. You don't even have that no more. Yeah, I don't even see that. I be... When I'm and the times I am at home on Saturday, I even try to cut on just to kind of see through my cable cover that I do have. I was like, to see if there's anything else with my son to watch. I'm like, there ain't, uh, nothing, there ain't nothing. Because you remember we had the USA Cartoon Express. You yep. had Stupid, ABC uh, garbage gar- garbage ass tattooed uh, teenagers. <laughs> man, that shit don't count, man. Look, <laughs> it have it, bro. <laughs> then you had uh, ABC had they Saturday morning cartoons. TBS had Saturday morning cartoon because that's how we got Captain Planet. Yep. CBS, uh, TNT CBS, CBS had theirs. TNT used TV. to show Johnny Quest and a lot of uh, Hanna Barbera cartoons. Yep. You yep. know, like we had sat, we had legit had sat, you know, 
the WB. We had Wayne Head and Animaniacs was on there too. Why you? Why do and, you think a lot of these networks are trying to like rehash a lot? Like for example, prime example, uh, Nickelodeon bringing back Are You Afraid of the Dark? Like a, it's gonna be like a. It's supposed to be like a. I watched the trailer for it. It's gonna be like a mini. It's like a like a what they call it. They always call it like a. Um, like a mini event is what they call. It. They're not even doing a full run. Uh, I guess so, they want to see the people, see what people. It's a lot is. of, it's a lot of people out there like me. But like I told Tink when she posted about it, I don't think are are you afraid, are you afraid of the dark was legit scary. I would have to go back. It was, it was I would scary. I have to go back. I have to go back and watch it to see because that's that's not going to be scary to you now. Yeah. But when it first started coming on, it came on spooky as hell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is like, like with like stuff with like Goosebumps, man. Like, like was Goosebumps yeah. really? It was Goosebumps really Goosebumps. scary. Goosebumps was scary, but it was good because I like seeing the books that I read come to come to come life. life. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. yeah, but the like that the scariest Goosebump is the one about the puppet. That's yeah. the scariest Goosebump. That is. Scary. They had a lot of they had a lot of episodes that really creeped me out that I remember reading, like uh. Like the one of my favorite episodes when the boy took a picture of, of everything that he took and he could see death in the pictures. Do y'all remember? Oh that? yeah, yeah. yeah. That was one of my favorite ones. But see, the Are You Afraid of the Dark? It came on so spooky. Then when they started telling their story and throw the little magic dust into the fire that turned the fire blue, it was just mm-hmm. like, damn. I wonder what's in that dust. <laughs> then this old. Then this old. Like everyday ass story come on, but then it take a turn for the worst. It's like, like it made you think. Like I think one was like, and like somebody. What really scared me about one of them is because it was this ghost story about our elementary school, Susie P. Tree, and folks used to say, "Oh, uh, Susie P. Tree, you know, had killed herself. She got drunk." set the pecan archet on fire and she ran into the pecan archet then they say on certain nights of the year she'll be uh, running down Alexander Street in her wheelchair on fire and you know one of the ghost stories from Are You Afraid of the Dark was about a a dead school principal who died uh, died a mysterious death so I was just like damn like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's just like uh, <laughs> there ain't no coincidence there ain't yeah, no coinky <laughs> it's like where y'all get this story from <laughs> if you don't mind me asking <laughs> but then you know as you got older you find out they had a story about Maddie Aiken they had a ghost story about Melissa Manning and Ella Darling and you know and they I, don't always, think, I don't think Weddison had a story. I, I really don't. I've never heard heard any. There yeah, wasn't nothing really bad about Weddison. Yeah, we just was in the, we were just a call of a circle. That was that was a story. That was the worst. <laughs> part. <laughs> yeah. Shoot, man. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, those shows being at Disney Plus just makes that service just that much more desirable for. I'm wondering, so here, I'm wondering, man. So I'm like, I, I started thinking, I'm like, man, okay, I got the kids are gonna be on their account, and I'm like, I'm gonna be on this X Men and Spider Man. How many? I want. I, I haven't yet to see like how many screens do you get with uh, Disney Plus? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. I hope it's three to five, man. I gotta make a a confession. What's up? You pay for I'm streaming service? T- no, I. Uh, <laughs> I uh, told it to uh, Angry B guy today, and he had never seen it, and he went and saw it, and he was just like, "I can't believe you like this." And uh, I, uh, but then it, it did turn into an argument. So the episode of Power Rangers when Tommy got the Master Morpher. Oh, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. I felt like that shit was cool. Hell yeah, that shit's cool. <laughs> and I like the part where he do the where he do the kick flip and morph in the air. I I feel like that shit was legit cool. And anger was like, I can't believe you like this shit. And he was just like, and then I said, but you know, when my boy Jason 
threw out that Tommy my friend shit out the window and I ain't finna try to save him. He kicked Tommy ass. Hey, that's when we got into the argument. I just couldn't let that shit ride like that. <laughs> so, you know I'm amped up to see these new episodes of Power Ranger with Jason because they give my boy, um, you know, even though he ain't got but two transformations, you know, the Red Ranger and the Gold Ranger, I feel like he should get a Master Morpher and a new Power Ranger uniform too for whatever he doing in this new series. I kind of feel that. And yeah. like Haim Saban, Saban in a Japanese interview did say the original six Power Rangers are the most powerful Power Rangers because they they morph for, they morphing power come from the pure morphing grid. It wasn't tainted by because Zorda made it. And it wasn't tainted by, you know, humans making them or nothing like that. So the argument in the group I was in is how they the most powerful when they had to get more powerful stuff in order to beat villains, which is what they don't understand, what I was trying to get them to understand. In order to give a show longevity, you got to give people new powers. Yeah. So, but... the dude that created Power Rangers said the original six are the most powerful Power Rangers. Speaking of speaking of Power Rangers, something kind of sad that happened over the past week. Um, can't think of the gentleman's name that voiced Lord Zed passed away. He was like yeah, seven, like seventy years old, which that yeah. kind of sucks, man. Because like thinking about we were talking about like some couple issues back, talking about <clears throat> the Power Ranger reboot. We were like okay, Zed got to be the one. Zed got to be the one coming, and. Yeah. It's like now with that voice finna, gone. But if they finna deal with the Zeo crystals in the next one, if if I'm not mistaken, I think they probably be dealing with the Zeo crystals. That's the Machine Empire, huh? Yeah. I don't know how. I, okay, I feel okay. I feel maybe it's just me because I was just like Zed was like the guy for like the longest time. Yeah, I, Zed, Zed. Man, I thought the Machine Empire hell. was just like lackeys, bro. I was just like, mm, they okay, they machines from outer space. What? Because even during the Machine Empire, like, Zed was still freaking, giving them freaking, hell. Power Rangers fighting Transformers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just really, I never really, I never really felt like they were. I like, I'm hyped for the Zeo Crystal because it's probably you get the Gold Ranger. Yeah, that is that is true as well. Um. We'll and I like to see the Gold Ranger because Turbo pissed me off because the Turbo movie pissed me off because you have my boy Jason in there without no Gold Ranger. Bro, I hated Dude, the Turbo him. movie. I cannot even though yeah, the I didn't I, like I, the I, Turbo I was, movie. I was, I was hyped for it to be a sequel, but I hated the Turbo movie. And the thing was, I didn't like. And in the first Power Ranger movie, I didn't like the way the Zords look. Zords look better in the TV show. Yeah, yeah. Now they use the same Zords from the TV show in Turbo, but in the in the first like the 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 only thing Turbo got right to me was the Zords. Now as far as like the uh, Zords in the other movies, they just look too fake. Yeah, Power like, Rangers the like the Power Ranger movie. <laughs> them Zords were super super shiny, <laughs> and I think it was, and I think they reason. Turbo got the Zords right because they were just cars. Yeah, and it was piggy. Now, it was literally it was literally at the time piggybacking off Turbo that was going at the same time. I but, think that movie was out too. Yeah, but at the same, but it, oh, my thing is with the last Power Ranger movie that came out, we didn't see dinosaurs and stuff as robots and Transformers. So how y'all get that wrong? Hmm, true, very true. Yeah. Cause when Optimus went and got the old in the uh what was that the uh what which uh Transformers they were well Optimus went and fought I know, the about, I know the one you're talking about was it the last night or the one I think it was one before that uh, something 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 Moon I know you're talking about though Dark Side of the Moon no Dark that wasn't Dark Side of the Moon Dark Side of the Moon that was that was the the, the one about the night okay now I do remember there was there was one where he went and got what you call it uh Grimlock from uh from what you call it yeah he wouldn't have got the prehistoric um because they were some of the first transformers to land on earth right. that's why they took the shape of dinosaurs right so uh 
you know, that was cool. And we saw that that could be done. Cause first thing I saw, what well, first thing I said when I saw Grimlock now was like, Oh, um, damn, the Power Ranger movie supposed to be getting come out so they can do the Zoids right. And if it nope. failed. That was, that was, was that Fox? <sighs> Possibly. Okay. Well, we're going we're gonna to say that it would anyway. Um, For which one? The new Power Ranger movie, the most recent one. Oh, that's Lionsgate. Lionsgate? Okay. They, they, they been the Lionsgate made Silent Hill, so... And they do they team they they pop they Tyler Perry. Uh, um okay. Yeah, Madea movies, Lion Gate and yeah. um, all the Shiro movies. Um quick question before we go to the main topic for tonight. Anybody watch Titan season two yet? I'm about to I'm about to I have it. not started. I gotta, I gotta, I got about to, I gotta, about to start up, restart up my uh, DC universe tonight and get to watching. I heard it's like, I heard it's good though. It's real good. So hold on, have they released like an entire season? Yeah, I think. Well, I think they're doing it. They're team with the same thing. They're doing it probably week by week. But I heard so far what it is like. You now people before we talked about like people were talking about like death strokes, you know, like armor and all that stuff. Like all the screenshots yeah. I've seen from those episodes, it looks really good. So, well, I'm gonna watch it on fire. <clears throat> yeah, we gotta do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start mine tonight. I may not start to watch it tonight. Probably till tomorrow. I hope I may, may sneak in an episode or two tonight because I know we're probably at least, probably at least, hmm, probably about three or four episodes behind. I think right now, I believe, because it comes out here Friday. Um, but yeah, so main topic tonight is going to be um, kind of more in relations to uh, there was like rumors about. Um, uh-huh. Back going back again to Marvel doing all these casting because this, like I said, it's been a rumor mill episode pretty much. Uh, with rumors of casting Magneto and Professor Xavier. Um, there's rumors floating around of higher of casting characters of color to play Xavier and Magneto. Um, man, I got a lot. I got, a lot. I mean, my stand, I mean, I'm gonna let y'all guys elaborate on, but I, my stance on it, my stand keep is, is there some stuff you gotta leave alone, yeah. Yeah, and this is coming from a kid. This is coming from a for those who've never seen us. I don't know what we look like. This is coming from a podcast that's all black. Yo, bro, they can tell by our voice. <laughs> hey, man, you just don't know, bro. Let's uh, look. Like, let's just be honest. <laughs> let's let's just be fantastic real honest. They're gonna fantastic board, freaking X Men if they go this route. I'm. I'm <laughs> It is very true by making Johnny Storm black. Yeah, that was a bad move. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, we did had some feelings about castings before, and it ended up working. But I just don't even feel like the backlash of making Professor Xavier black. No. It throws off. Okay, so here's what I was thinking about too. Um it throws off the story for Magneto drastically. Basically, yeah, it really does because he's German. Right. I know there's, there's black people well, you know, he, young, grew up in Germany, but that's it's still, it's like the thing with the Holocaust and all. It just, yeah, it, yeah it, it just throws the story out. That's like you got to create a whole new so story. What you go, so, so here's my question. So if you're going to, if you're going to, okay, I'm just spitballing right now because I feel this is what they would probably do. If you make Magneto black, what you gonna make him? He used to be a freaking. He used to be a slave. His parents were slaves. That's the only thing you could really do. This is historically matching up to the Holocaust. To black people, slavery that's up there. So what can you really do? So honestly, that's... like Magneto has to be white, German, whatever. He needs to stay that way. <clears throat> Yeah, that's how. Jewish, German. He he was speaking German. <laughs> he was speaking German because he got kidnapped into slavery. So of course he had to learn it. Uh, no man, one uh, one hardly no black people up there around that time. Man, just leave it alone. Yeah, leave it, leave it, leave that where it is, man. And you know, like we we know we even had our issues with people getting mad 
about turning a historically white character to black, but like this, you leave you need leave it alone. Yeah. Yeah. Here's but another, I understand. Uh, I understand where they're coming from, though, because that it's it's been a story where they they've said that they came up with the characters from. Malcolm X and Martin Luther King's. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's yeah, that's, that's true. You know that's what you know uh, Stan Lee made it from because the X Men was supposed to be about you know civil rights. Right. Exactly. So yeah, that's but... where I I see their vision coming from, but don't 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 change it. Like just leave it. <laughs> uh, this is some things you shouldn't touch. Like it's good enough that Stanley got his inspiration from black people, real life black people. That I think that's good enough. Yep, yeah, that's that's just, that's good enough. Keep it going. Uh, Briaria, what you about to say? Uh, yeah. well, Tink, Tink uh, had the same point that I was going to bring, but uh, I don't, I don't feel changes. I think this should. Yeah, I think they should. I, de- yeah, I definitely think that it's like it's not even like for this for this one particular thing. It, like it's not even a question. It's like you ch- like again, you change Magneto, it's just gonna just throw like a bunch of stuff off. It really is. It's gonna throw, it's gonna throw a bunch of stuff off. So it's like it needs to be left as is, and let those people kind of know that you know people who know the history of the comic and the X-Men and where it derived from, that does just be something that you just kind of like, no, you don't have to. Yeah. There ain't no point in playing that out on screen in the exact way that he kind of felt that it was, but he made them like, I, I don't, I don't care to see that. I really don't. I really, really don't. My thing was what the, the, the way I felt about, uh, the first X-Men movie casting, is I felt like when it came to Beast, Professor Xavier, Magneto, and um, Wolverine, they got the casting perfect. Mm Because Patrick Stewart really resembled Professor Xavier. Man, back then, that's the only person that they did X-Men with. That's the only person you could think of. He was a super popular ball head guy. So, yeah. (laughs) So, I mean... I kind of got an idea that I want to bring up about up? as far as casting. Mm-hmm. What if you keep some of the original people played in the X Men, like uh, Edo and Xavier, keep them, but make a better script? Yeah, I don't think the castings were bad. Jennifer, what you call it? No, I don't. I don't. Okay, I, I don't gotta. I gotta. I gotta. Get this off my chest. I didn't like the direction of making Mystique the main character of the X-Men, that X-Men trilogy that we just got through with. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, okay. It wasn't so bad. But let's get something straight. Dark Phoenix is not a bad movie at all. Whoever I saw said the, it was... I saw, the, I saw the train fight from that, and that was like... The train fight was pretty graphic and pretty different from anything I've seen from X-Men. Because X-Men usually the, don't get that graphic like that. The, the movie is really good, y'all. Whoever said Dark Phoenix was a bad movie was lying. They just was hating. Um, I was Fox one of went guys. out with a bang. So yeah, a lie? Fox went out with a bang with Dark Phoenix. Yes, you was a lie because Dark Phoenix was a good movie. <laughs> Me and Angry sat here and watched Dark Phoenix together, and we both said it. That was a damn good movie. Whoever said it was trash was just in their feelings about some shit. Oh, they're having flashbacks of Last Stand, which could, which is also possible. <sighs> so now I gotta watch. Yeah, I know, right? Now, now, now I gotta Don't. watch it. <laughs> yeah, Don't. Dark Phoenix is a really good movie. And I saw, I, like I said, I, I saw the, I saw a clip on Facebook of that whole, like, train fight sequence, and I was like, man, this is actually pretty freaking decent, this, at least this part. I was it's, ca- it's, it's, it's got a good script. To me, it got a good script. It got a good storyline. It's it like you know what I think kind of messes it up. What I'm not saying as far as from because I haven't seen it. I think what kind of I think what kind of messes it up. What messes up X Men in general from 
uh, a standpoint of like us as fans and stuff like that, what messes it up for a lot of us, the X Men animated series, it set up everything. If you've never watched it, you never read a comic book in your life, and you saw the X Men, you knew it came from comic books, and you saw that TV show. That is the blueprint of what you expected a movie to be like. I mean, but you know, from the whole yeah. play out, from the whole play out of the entire that season when they went into the whole Dark Phoenix thing with Jean Grey and the Shi'ar Empire and them going into space. When you hear Dark Phoenix movie, you literally like honestly as a fan in our age group, you just want the X Men show what we just saw in this freaking four or five part series. We would just want this shit on screen. That's all we want. That, that's yeah. all we want. But see, the <clears throat> thing is. Like with Dark Phoenix, the movie, it didn't go out into the Shiite Empire and all that right there. But the way she got turned into the Dark Phoenix, all that, like everything, just like the the it showed how because uh, the movie started out showing how Xavier got Jean, and you know how, how Jean was getting pushed over the edge. Because, you know, it was the fact that Xavier put mental blocks in her when she was a child, right? Yeah, yeah. And he just saw how those those walls were falling and how she was steady getting pushed over the edge and stuff like that. And, you know, the only thing I didn't like about it is that she killed Mystique because Mystique ended up living longer than, you know, longer than that, than, you know, because she ended up, Mystique ended up becoming a, a older lady in natural you know, having yeah. a child and everything. But we'll never yeah. see that now, will we? But I'm just saying. Well, well they didn't. Well, they didn't. Well, they didn't, that, well, they didn't play that movie. Right. Well, they didn't play that right. They didn't play that right to begin with, and hopefully, Marvel kind of fixes that with the MCU because the, because the Mystique we got in this version of Mystique that we got with Jennifer was Jennifer Lawrence is her name. Yeah, Jennifer Lawrence. The version we got with Jennifer Lawrence is a younger version. Yo. Which we shouldn't even got Nightcrawler because that's t- 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 how Nightcrawler got here, sir. Yeah, that's Mama. So it's like they she they gave him up the, for the, adoption yeah the kind the kind the kind of the kind of, the kind of stuff action. they yeah the kind of stuff they kind of ignore. I that's one thing I want to see when Marvel gets their hand on me. I want to see all these dots to end up being connected. Well, I want I want like you know Scarlet Witch when she tries to when we have when we have X Men introduced. And she starts to figure, starts to wants to find out who her parents is, and she finds out that it's Magneto that we've been seeing in these MCU X Men movies. That's that's my father, and that's yeah. thing. So I want to, I, I want to see those dots connected when it comes to Marvel. And, and um, you know, like that bonus scene that we showed that that cut scene with um Nick Fury talking about mutants and you know, you know, mutants and stuff like. That'd be, you know, dope to even just flash back and show him talking about that to introduce the X Men and stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely would. All right, man. Uh, speaking of speaking of Nick Fury, um, for those who don't know, which I was kind of shocked, I just saw the commercial tonight. Uh, Far from Home, uh, his digital tomorrow. So for those who you know didn't get a chance to see it or just want to watch it again on digital, it's digital tomorrow, which is pretty fast considering I feel like that movie just came out. Um, but yeah, man. We're going to bring this issue of Nerd Flow to a close of issue 115. Please make sure you guys uh, share the show. Um, also, give us good ratings on whatever podcast platform you listen to us on. Uh, man, you say your pity. What? <laughs> what I do, man? I said the pity. Don't worry. I don't even realize what I said, anyway. Uh, no, I yeah. said say pity. Oh, say it, pity. Okay. Like, it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram is where you can find us, man. Please make sure you guys go subscribe to our YouTube channel, all that good stuff. We got the Facebook group, and of course, we got 50% off t-shirts. And if you didn't catch any of that, then description of the show, all the links are right there, so you can follow uh, follow us and all the stuff I just just said. So, hey, yeah. And I'm back on Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go is live now. You can battle everything. And um, I didn't complete all my steps to get Mew. I caught my ditto today, so I'm finna get Mew. And then they, we just got a message today saying that Mew too will be in the raids. So hopefully he be in the raid around Greenville, 
because we gonna hop on him on his bumper, fam. Yeah. I just got my I just got my five year old into I got my son into my son is like Friday is like movie Friday for him, so anytime you know. So I was like, I have stars, and so I decided to. Um, I was like, oh, Yu Gi Oh. He's never seen Yu Gi Oh before. Boy got done with that movie. He loves Yu Gi Oh now. Loves him. So you should have shown the first Pokemon movie. Oh no, he already no, he already he was on Pokemon way before. I didn't even introduce him to Pokemon. He has Hulu on the Switch, and so he watches a lot of kids shows on his on his on his Hulu account on Switch. So he he knew who Pokemon was. He was he been on Pokemon a long way before I even tried to introduce him to it. But I got him on I got him on Yu Gi Oh. He he loves loves Yu Gi Oh now. So. After the, after the Pharaoh gone, I don't even want to watch Yu-Gi-Oh no more. Yeah, I don't, I don't watch that. I don't watch that. You that DX. I don't. Nah, I don't, I don't do that. It's only it's after all original. The Pharaoh bro. is yep. around. Yep, I don't, I don't do that no. That's sacrilegious, bro. Nope. All right, man. So we out of here. We will catch you guys next week on one sixteen. All right. Hello.